from London, England, it's The Q, covering Discover 2016 London, brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Welcome back to the Docklands of London. We're here at London Excel. This is HPE Discover 2016, and this is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Bill Philbin is here, he's the new Vice President GM of the Storage Division at HPE. Congratulations, Bill, Thanks, it's good nice. to see you again. Yeah, nice and, to see you, buddy. And Oren Torstensen is here. He's the CTO and Head of IT Systems Management uh, at Fun AS. Thank Great you. to see you, thanks for coming on. Thank you. So Bill, we got to start with you. Uh, again, congratulations, uh, I'm stoked that they picked a technical guy to, to lead the storage division. You know, HP getting back to its roots of invent. That's so right, That's Really right. fabulous. Product and, uh, guys are taking over. Well deserved, <laughs> I love to see it. But uh, give us the update on, uh, on the division. Yeah, so you know, we've had a, we've had a, a very, very successful run. Um, you know, if you think about what HP was six years ago when I started, we were like number five or number six in the storage business. So today, we're number one in uh, internal, external storage. We're number two in external storage, tied statistically with NetApp. This is as of, you know, IDC's latest numbers. We're number three in all flash. Number one in all flash here in EMEA from nowhere two and a half years ago. So if you think, take a look at the strength of the portfolio from you know, all flash to data protection to our entry portfolio, everything is humming uh, at, at Hewlett Packard. Excellent, and Yarn, tell us about FUN and what you guys do and what you're all about. Well, FUN is a service provider uh, located in northern parts of Norway. Uh, so we uh, have been a service provider for the last 20 years or so. Um, with both services from our own data centers, uh, we have two data centers up north, and then we also obviously uh, combine that with public cloud services for our customers. Uh, and our main goal is to be uh, this book for, for our customers. So we want to own the customers and talk to the customers and produce the services ourselves that we need to produce and we, and we white label services from other partners as well. So I had my first experience with Norwegian Airlines this week, you know, <laughs> flying to Gatwick instead of going to Heathrow. It was a, a very pleasant. Yeah. It's like the jet blue of <laughs> European Airlines. It was fantastic. The so. most wired country <laughs> in the world. Ever. Yeah. And by That's the true. way, Norwegian Airlines, through a partner of ours in Norway, mm. is on three part. Yeah. Is that right? That's, that's right. All the more reason to highly recommend <laughs> Norwegian Airlines. I'm not kidding, it was a great experience. But, uh, but so tell us about your story. Uh, uh, we were talking off camera. You used to be an IBM partner. Yeah. When the Lenovo deal went down, you, you, mm. you stepped back and said, okay, yeah. maybe it's time to reassess. Mm. Why and why HP, how did this Well, HP? I mean, the, the world is changing and the world is changing quite rapidly and we, we also need some strong partners. Uh, and we had a partnership with IBM for, for a few years. Uh, but we chose to go the HP way uh, and actually in, in all sense, both on the storage part and on the server part. Okay. Um, and I mean, if you just look at look at the event here today, and you see the the width and, and the expertise that is in HP, uh, that's a partner that's that's value for us. And they can choose, and they understand us, and they are quite near us, so they can understand our needs, and they can they can pick out the the uh, products and the and the things that we need to do our business. And they've had a very strong uh, uh, sales engagement model, local country resource. I mean, the, 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 the partnership between the two companies is, is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So paint a picture, if, if you would, of your infrastructure and sort of your, your operations. What's it look like? Well, we have, we have two data centers, as I said, uh, located in the northern parts of Norway. Um, one primarily data center, uh, which actually has been providing services since 1998 or something. Mm -hmm. um, and we just acquired the data center number two in 2015. Uh, so we have we have a setup that's uh, well as good as it can get, and we can provide services to all the customers that we need. Um, many of our customers are based in northern parts of Norway and in Norway in general. Um, but I mean, it's it's not a restriction to where we want to provide services. Um, and going from there, uh, we have always been providing services on a per month per use basis to our customers. Um, and the partnership that we have with HPE now, uh, we have gotten a, a, a deal in the partnership, especially through the flexible capacity part that does that, underlines that business model from our point of view. So that we can use 
HP as a partner uh, to do the stuff that HP knows how to do. Uh, that is installing and configuring and updating all the hardware stuff. So we can we can focus on our customers and, and the value adding things on our customers. So if you moved from a capex to an opex yeah. model. And was that a uh, an offering that was that was unique to HP? And when you were looking at the yeah. at the partners you could work with at, at the time when we looked at it, yeah, definitely. Uh, and I mean the whole model surrounding it. it the one thing is the opex capex bit, but I mean it's it's just as important that what what do we want to focus on as an organization? Um, and my guys want to focus on our customers. Uh, and I mean HPE knows their products; they can do the installment, they can do the upgrades. We don't have to have confidence on that. They can do the capacity planning for us. So how's that, I was going to ask, how's that work? So HPE does the capacity planning? That's right, with, uh, that's right. And we have so a monthly meeting with them, uh, just going through the, the different stuff, and this is both on the service side and on the on the storage side. Uh, and then we do the planning and see how, how do we going forward from this. So it's, it's compute and storage on, yeah. on demand as their business dictates we deliver the services capability internally. And we just announced here at the show, sort of the next installment of that called Flash Now, mm -hmm. which is for three cents a usable gigabyte, you can get all flash storage. And because this is, you know, storage, it, sooner or later, from innovation to sort of industrialization, it always comes down to economics. Yeah. And what we've just brought forward is an economic model that, in our estimate, is about half the cost of what a conventional uh, cloud you know, oriented storage uh, uh, service would cost you, you can half of that, three cents a gig, usable per month in your data center, no data sovereignty issues, mm -hmm. Norway's very big in data sovereignty, et cetera. But now, but now, now how does it work in terms of, so I get flexible capacity, meaning I can, how much can I turn it on and turn it off at my, my right, world. well, you, I don't think this is not a thousand percent meter that you can, you can <laughs> yeah, just, it's you know, just, it's yeah, not more power Scotty, right? But there's, there's some granularity But there is, there, there is a flexible capacity within the, the, the customer's data center, like Flynn's data center, where we, we understand how their business is scaling and we pre-provision capacity yeah. um, as a result of that through a partnership, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. So, so if, if, I'm a, if I'm a retailer and I, and I get a huge spike in traffic at the holiday season mm -hmm. uh, that's double what I get at the rest of the year, are you going to put double the, the uh, amount if that's of what's required, on, sure. Uh, yeah. The in interesting site? thing though is that from a storage perspective, most of that stuff has to stick because you know, it's, it's flexible compute capacity, you're absolutely right, but a storage capacity, most of that storage has got to stick mm -hmm. because you want to go back and do data analytics on what was purchased or returns or you know or whatever. So from our vantage point, more storage you consume is, is great because it rarely comes back. We're seeing a, an increasing trend. I've seen, talked with a couple of hyperconverged vendors recently who are yeah. doing this. The, the OPEX, they put the, bo the box on site, they yeah. uh, manage it remotely, and you pay them pay them a fee. Is this something that your data center customers are demanding in large scale uh, as well? Uh, absolutely. I think as the as the pressures, you know, depending on what industry you're in, you know, all around a cap capex operating model, this is really what customers um, are are essentially demanding, and it's for customers who have scale and size and complexity that you can't go to uh, Amazon or Google to go to go get right. You know. Uh, this is the Netflix of the world, or the Dropbox, who just moved from AWS to all HP infrastructure in their data center. That's the kind of scale that we're talking about with Fun and a lot of other customers are driving that economics model. So what are, what are the characteristics of companies that are best qualified for this kind of, of OpEx model? Well, so first of all, I think Flash is going mainstream, right? So Flash was this boutique, you know, high performance, very expensive, well guess what, you know, at this point we've long since you know, um, got to the crossover point where we're selling more flash than we're selling capacity, uh, selling spinning media capacity. So first of all, the first answer to your question is for just about everybody. <laughs> um, second of all, and the economics have to work though, right? And so that's where you've got to look at your data change rate, the, the business growth, it's got to work for both parties. So it's really, uh, the, to answer your question, it's a conversation you should have with your salesperson to figure out this is the right economics yeah. model for you. Are these companies who might otherwise have gone to the cloud or they, could, they couldn't, they simply couldn't? I think it is for companies who want to go to the cloud, but are concerned about um, SLAs around performance. And when Netflix is down, Mrs. Philbin calls me. <laughs> right? It's like a telephone service yeah. at this point, right? If, if Dropbox is dead, we have customers who cannot no longer run their businesses. And so I think it's, it's from that vantage point that customers are not willing to make the trade off between availability and cost, and we're giving that, that capability. If that makes sense. Orion, how do you protect all this critical data. 
Well, How do you protect all this data? <laughs> How do we protect it? Well, I mean, this is something that we almost also use HP for, uh, and by now we, we're using the store once mm -hmm. uh, capability, uh, and we take that uh, through the Veeam backup system, and, and I mean through store once and, and the DDoP uh, specification that we have there, it's it's uh, well, it gives us economics. Uh, mm -hmm. We have to store and we have to be uh, considering the, the protection of the data, especially on the on the old flash side. Right. Uh, but I mean, uh, yeah. So okay. we announced here at the did show a good uh, an expansion of our partnership with, with Veeam, and we now are entering a resell agreement with Veeam, so a yeah. customer can actually buy uh, from a single vendor uh, both the Veeam software as well as as, as, uh, as Store Once. I think one in every ten Store Once boxes are actually protected by Veeam today. Mm. Okay. So we, we we have expanded our partnership, which will make transacting business for people like Fun a lot easier because it'll be on a single a single piece. Are paper. you a Veeam customer? Yeah. You yeah, are, okay, that, so yeah. you're not using uh, uh, data protector? No. No, yeah. okay, so this is, actually that's another benefit of uh, the, the micro-focus software spin merge. Well, I mean, so data is protector is, is the largest connect we have with Store One. So, so regardless of the spin merge, we'll continue, we, we continue to see them as a very, sure. very strategic partner. But it opens you up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, Veeam, has, it, it, we've had a good, strong relationship, a development relationship with Veeam over the years as well, and it gives us customers an opportunity to choose which is the right platform mm -hmm. For them, are they I mean, for a, and, and for yeah. us, I mean, much of this is, is historical. Uh, and where do we have competence, and what do we That's right. want to do? And, and we have to we have to connect to some partners. I mean, the, the fact that HP and, and Veeam now connect is, is great news for us, obviously. Are you a VMware shop as well, or? Well, yeah, as of today, we are. But we are also converting that in quite a great extent over to Microsoft and Hyper-V. So Hyper-V? Yeah. Why? 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 Talk about it. Uh, purely cost, actually. Uh, so and, VTAX. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we, we have to, yeah, I mean, we are, uh, we are in the business that obviously are being pressured on margins and we have to earn our money. Uh, and, and as of now, Hyper-V is coming up with, with products that's, well, not as good, but probably good enough and to a cost that's, uh, well, quite much lower than the, the VMware part is today. Are you uh, using containers or moving to containers in a, in a big way? Well, we have been discussing, but as, not as of today, no. But, but we're looking into and seeing, I mean, what do we want to do with our data centers going forward? Uh, and how should we handle the capacity? Um, so that's an interesting discussion, obviously, yeah. And are you doing anything with OpenStack, or, or no? No, not as well. No, okay, so Hyper-V, you, you nailed it. I mean, that's Microsoft strategy, it's good yeah. enough. Yeah. Maybe not quite as good as vSphere, but yeah. gets the job done yeah. at yeah. significantly yeah. lower yeah. cost. Yeah. When, when you moved to, uh, to uh, flat, when you brought Flash into your data center, did you, what, what type of applications did you move off of spinning disk first? Well, first of all, we did the, did the database stuff, uh, and, and things that, that required the high IOPS that we mm -hmm. get of all Flash, but uh, going forward, we actually are moving everything. At the, at, at the economics we're talking about, you no longer have to make this choice between no. what's on spinning and what's on all flash. The mm. benefits of all flash, whether it's lower TCO, lower energy costs, higher, you know, higher performance, yeah. better reliability, because of the economic change, now we no longer have to have that debate. It's, no. it's, it's easy to say, yeah. you almost, we have customers telling us, you have to say why you're not going to put it on all flash. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Well, well, what is your requirement still, for spinning media? You're still selling almost half of your storage sales. You said are still spinning media. Yeah. Is it the, they just don't get it? There, there are customers who are you know are slower to transition certainly than uh, than others. There are people who think for long term retention purposes, mm -hmm. spinning media is still is still uh, better for that for that. So there's there are, there are some discrete use cases, but by and large, I think it is simply uh, a matter of uh, of time before. Most of our customers are going to be running. We, we all think flash. so too. I mean, you say it's not even a debate anymore. Interestingly yeah. enough, in the Wikibon community, we we continue to have that debate only because we've been so forceful about the all flash data center, as you well know. Um, and we've said, but but there are, in fairness, the slower spin speed disks are still less expensive yep. for archiving. There are still there are some economic retention. cases where um, that's the. And it's just a matter of time. We've said by 2020 that yeah. crossover will occur. We but but not everybody agrees. Obviously, we've had spirited debates with the Seagates and the Western Digitals of the world. We are happy to sell a customer <laughs> either. What do you, you really don't care, well, right? But, but but you see the trend, and the trend is your friend. I mean, Oren, what, what would you say to those customers who are holding back, uh, who are still clinging to, to rigid media? Well, I mean, from our point of view, the, the, as, as uh, our business case shows, the, the economics about that is not too bad. So, I mean, you, you want to, 
<laughs> where do you want to use your, your time and effort as well? Uh, and you have some bottlenecks in, in your system anyhow. Uh, and you don't want to use time and energy on, on the disk side. And you want to have uh, enough capacity and enough uh, performance on the disk side. So for our point of view, that was actually quite an easy task. And, and that combined with the fact that you also can have a whole uh, other utilization on the flash disk. Because you don't have to think about IOPS. You can use all your, your dedicated space. Uh, so I mean, you, you have to take that also into recognition when you actually do the business case. Right, I mean, you need less to do the same or, or yeah. more work. If you, if you buy a, a terabyte with all flash, you can use a terabyte. <laughs> and, you're, yeah. and you're data reducing it yeah. very yeah. effectively yeah. with compression and dedupe. And I don't know if you've gotten into it yet, but you can share many, many copies yeah. on a single flash device, which you really can't with spinning yeah. disk. You've got right. to make, you get copy The mechanism only works, so, you know, yeah. only works so effectively. And so I, I, I think it just, it's really going to be a matter of time. And I think from a storage business perspective, you know, our business is going to have to change simply because we're selling customers less capacity for performance yeah. and just more spinning media. Mm. And I, you know, I think if there's any you know, decline in the storage market or flattening of the storage market, most people say it has to do with cloud or you know, software as a service. Or I think it actually is this, we've done it to ourselves. All flash, better compaction technologies, right? Uh, devices are living longer, customers moving devices from three to five to seven years, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. All that means we have to find newer and newer customers to sell more stuff to all the time now. So, so it isn't, the, isn't, but Bill, isn't the market elastic? In other words, if you cut prices, yeah. won't people just buy more storage? Well, I mean, historically, I, you know, that's been the case. Right? I, I, you know, I always like, think that uh, uh, storage markets like toilet paper. Sooner or later, you got to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> or rent it, or rent it in or your case now. Yeah, we're not, we're not doing a flexible capacity model of toilet paper, right? trust me. So, so I, I think sooner or later, that's the case, but it is, it is a much more aggressive market you know, out there as a, as, you know, as, a, as a result, because not only we're feeling that, all the other vendors are feeling the same. So it's a, it's a much more, uh, competitive and aggressive market, and the good news is we, you know, we're in the leadership, in you know, a pole position for all flash. And, and, and flash prices are coming down faster yeah, than that's right. spinning disk, right? That's so right. that's kind of inevitable as well. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, think about a laptop. I mean, if you buy a laptop now, you'd almost be insane to think it has a spinning spinning device in it. You anymore, wouldn't take right? it. You wouldn't take it. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I got one, and they, I handed it back uh, in my refresh cycle. I said it's got a spinning media. You know, it's, I'm, I'm used to pressing the button. And you know, instant on, right? And so, you know, I, I think that's you know that's the state of the art with we'll moving storage too. Yeah. All right, we're going to wrap. Uh, Bill, final thoughts. I mean, on, uh, you know, what does this partnership underscore? What's happened in the market? We, so, so the sort of the, sort of relation. This is the prototypical customer, right? This is a customer who is you know where there's a good partnering model, thoughtful, um, using the full extent of the portfolio, um, you know, growing. Uh, you know, 3PAR was known for its service provider market well before we acquired them. This is living evidence that that is still alive and well. Um, not only with, uh, with FUN, but we've got a number of other service providers in Norway using the product day in and day out. So, you know, we were really delighted to have you here and, um, and help us with this. And I'm, you're a lot more interesting to talk to than I am. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, gentlemen, thanks very much Thank for you. coming to theCUBE. Really Thank you, appreciate Alex. your time. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Paul and I will be back. We're here at London Excel. This is theCUBE. We're at HPE Discover 2016. Be right back.